Today at the Chokeslam Wrestling Report, we're going to go to WrestleMania Night 1 and what, what happened last night. Some of the matches and some of the matches that looked like we were watching SmackDown. Other matches were pretty good, which I can't complain. But one match in particular, which I would consider the worst WrestleMania match in the history of the event. That and much more on the Chokeslam Wrestling Report. I just want to give you thanks for tuning in to my channel today also I want to give thanks to all the subscribers who have subscribed to my YouTube channel um, if you guys if you're watching for the first time first time listening hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell give me a thumbs up it will help my channel greatly and I will appreciate it so let's get it going here let's put it this way Wrestlemania this year does not look like the WrestleManias in the past. As you well know, the situation is happening in wrestling. The epidemic that's going around that's put WrestleMania 36 in trouble as they pulled it out of Tampa. They moved it to, uh, to Orlando, to the Performance Center. And of course, Ms. McMahon being greedy for the revenues and, you know, for the money and uh, I guess the security, he figured the show must go on. Even though you have several wrestlers who got sick, Ray Mysterio, Dana Brooke, De, uh, Buddy Murphy, uh, The Miz, um, Andrade, a bunch of people got sick. But then the show must go on. So, first of all, the WrestleMania started with the pre the kickoff show. I didn't bother to watch the kickoff show because the kickoff show, I didn't, I didn't know who wrestled that, to be honest. Come to find out that Drew Gulak and Cesaro had a match. I didn't know that because by the time I put it, it was like 10 minutes before the actual show started. The day, I did see that they had Corey Graves and I believe, I forgot, oh, and um, a guy from, uh, that comes out in um, Hot 97, I forgot his damn name, uh, Rosenberg, whatever his name is, they were in the show, I don't know if it was pre-taped, well, well that's many was pre -ta was taped anyway, but, and then they had Renee Young, Booker T, and Mark Henry in like some type of Skype I think that was on uh, live, so um, so it was cool. But then at the beginning of the show, eight minutes of long promos about the history of this show. Eight minutes. And I'm like, why were you doing all this when we all know what the history of WrestleMania is all about? Of course, I'm sure that you had the first timers, the casual fans who never seen this. And they went and they did this whole eight minutes. And I'm like, I tweeted eight minutes of this. This is just nauseating, to be honest. But anyway, the match, the, the WrestleMania event started with a women's WWE women's tag team title match between Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss, Alexa Bliss the challengers versus the Kabuki Warrior. Um, this match, uh, you know, Alexa and Asuka started only for, you know, Asuka to tag out to carry this in. A lot of mockery in the beginning, you know. Uh, Nikki Cross um, tries to choke uh, Kairi Zane uh, at one point when she just like uh, rolled behind Kairi Zane, try to put her in some type of sleeper hole, only to get taken to the opposite corner, and then they get double teamed by the Warriors. Uh, Nikki and Alexa took control of the match after attacking the Warriors outside. The Warriors, Asuka kicked Nikki on the head outside to take control of the match, and then the Warriors are uh, doing great double teaming let me tell you there was a lot of great double teaming in this match between the warriors so they looked at like the more uh more team with the with the chemistry of double teaming um in this match uh so they they had nikki cross in trouble um uh, alexa got the hot tag she did not sell her run into the corner when oscar threw her to the corner this woman did not she didn't she didn't she didn't um play uh, she didn't sell her getting hit in the corner, which is ridiculous. This is why I say these women's wrestlers, especially Alexa. Alexa is horrible. She did not sell her run to the corner. Kiara double stomped Alexa in the corner at one point when Alexa was hanging from the corner and she double stomped her um, in the corner. 
Um, then Alexa was in trouble after sliding a for, uh, sliding form from um, from Kyrie Zing. Oscar using every illegal tactic she could imagine use. Of course, Oscar. I don't know. I like this Oscar compared to the Oscar when she first came up the roster. She's mean. I mean, she's a, a protege of Minoru Suzuki. A lot of you guys don't know that. And she, well, everything you see her now, that's Minoru Suzuki style. Okay, so Oscar hit Alexa with a hard knee for a two count. Uh, then they tag hot tag on Nikki. She bulled, bulled up by Nikki on Zane. Cross body for a two count. Oscar saved by Kari when the, she with an overdraft from the top rope. It was sick. I mean, I thought I was like, you know, wow. Well, Nikki, a twisted blitz on Oscar, and she tried to. Uh, uh, well, she was trying to choke out Nikki, uh, but then the Warriors hit a, a doomsday like the um, like a clothesline from the top on Nikki cross for a two count, and then Alexa Bliss hit the twisted blitz on Zayn uh, for the win. And that's the way um, uh, Nikki Cross and Alexa win the women's WWE Tag Team Champion. My opinion, this match, a solid tag team match. I can't complain about it. I won't complain about it. Uh, even though Alexa did not sell at one point. She's horrible. Alexa Bliss is a horrible freaking wrestler. I don't care what anybody say. She sucks. I'm sorry. So I don't know how this woman was the uh, women's champion, I think, four times. Uh, back then, she was wrestling much better than she wrestles now. She did not sell. At one point, she got thrown in the corner. She did not sell that at all. So, I don't care what all these uh, Alexa basement dweller guys who are fucking drooling for this woman who can't wrestle for crap. But she is now the women's tag team champion with Nikki Cross. This is Nikki Cross, I believe. I think them, they won the tag team titles before. I think they beat, they beat the Iconics, if I'm not wrong. So, they're the tag team champions. So, not a bad match. It was 16 minutes too damn long, but the match is good. I like the Kabuki Warriors the way they were, they were uh, double teaming this. But you know, uh, the question is what now? Then the next match was Kid Corbin against Elias. Um, this was looked like a SmackDown match. I'll tell you the truth. I'm just gonna keep it real right here. Um, this looked like a SmackDown match, uh, but the show when um, Kid Corbin did a promo. I don't know what this damn promo thing with no people in there. Just drives me nuts when I see that. Um, so they show how King Corbin uh, threw Elias from a, the 15 foot perch from from NXT where the Monster Champ and Gargano were wrestling each other a couple of month uh, a couple of weeks ago. So he threw him from up there, which uh, they it's, 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 it's like they're biting off NXT. What the Gargano and Champa did, where they both felt through down, it was just horrible. Anyway, so they show that. And then Kid Corbin asked that for the referee to raise his hand because the liar was not there. So to, he I was asking for a forfeit went only for Elias to come out. And then he went and blasted a guitar over the back of King Corbin and Elias took control of the match. Kid Corbin threw Elias outside, but then again he he's in the um only to you know um let me see. Oh my god, let's go. my notes are here a mess. I know that he he threw him outside. So he could get some breath, and then he went outside, and started um, beating up on on, on Elias, and threw uh, Elias on the corner um, to the ring, um, the, like to the ring post, hurt his shoulder there. Uh, of course, Elias tried to throw Corbin on on to the to the rope, but Corbin slides under the knee the rope, and to only to come out to the other side and close line Elias. Again, um, Elias threw. Uh, he threw a lie to the shoulder, shoulder first against on the other side of the pose, on the other shoulder. Corbin elbow first on Elias several times, and he kept pounding him on the on, with his elbow, point of elbow right on the side of the neck of Elias while he was by the ropes. Corbin charged and hit his shoulder in the pole, and then Elias showing a mean streak, attacking Corbin in the corner. It looked like they were going to disqualify him. Elias going to the top, rolls, and gets caught with a deep six by Corbin for a two count. Elias hits Corbin with a high knee for a two count when uh, Corbin tries to throw him in the ropes. He gets caught with that. Corbin nails Elias and tries to use the ropes. And the referee saw when he put his leg on the ropes. The referee said, what are you doing? And as he argues with the referee, he gets caught, rolled up, and Elias pulled the trunk of Corbin, and he wins this match. Uh, the match was a pretty, pretty, I can't say it was a bad match. It was. It was a pretty decent match. 
it just felt like a SmackDown match. It was, this match should not. This is not WrestleMania worthy. I'm sorry. I don't care what anybody tells me. This was not WrestleMania worthy. And if you put it, you would have put it in the WrestleMania where like, a crowd, people would have been bored to death. I tell you that much. They would have been bored to death. So, um, so that part, it was, um, it was an all right match. I think they should have done a little better. Uh, right after that match, we had the WWE Women's match, and this is the match that really, really pissed me off. And I, I said, okay, they had the Alexa Bliss. Uh, Nick Cross tag team women's title match. Okay, not bad. Uh, Elias Corbin. Okay, you trying to bring us? Then they went and they gave us the Shayna Baszler versus Becky Lynch match for the women's Raw title. Becky Lynch. Both of them step into the ring and started exchanging blows. Shayna using kicks on Becky's leg was working on her hamstring outside the ring. Becky hits Ahura Karana outside the ring on ba uh, Baszler when Baszler attempt to grab um, Becky and Rambo against the, the announcing, uh, announcing table, but Becky went and reversed it, put it to Ahura Karana. Becky was in control until she gets hit with a high knee in the face by Baszler. Baszler hits a hard, hits a hard takedown on Becky. She kind of like did like a belly to bully suplex and um, like a body takedown. Both exchanging the edge of the ring at one point. And Becky uh, hits a bookend like like a rock bottom type on the edge of the ring on Shayna Baszler. And then Becky to the top but gets caught in, the, in a, like an arm bar scissors when she was, um, she was trying to jump off the top rope and got caught with an arm bar by Shayna. Shayna looked like she, you know, was was gonna put that uh, the, this armor at one point on Becky, but Shayna hits a knee on Becky for the two count. Shayna bashes Becky twice on the announcing table, and then Shayna gets Becky in a choke, only to get get caught pinned with a reverse. And this is what the thing that pisses me off because once you put her on a choke, uh, a sleeper hole choke, like you knew that Becky was gonna go backwards and roll up and have. Shayna Baszler shows us down for the pin. And you would figure out oh, Shayna's going to get out. Two count. Let go of the hole. She didn't. And she got pinned. Now, my thing is, this is the thing that pisses me off. Because why the hell did you bring Shayna Baszler up with the roster? Make her look as this dominating woman. She she pretty much took out, uh, she embarrassed the whole woman roster at Elimination Chamber. She uh, pretty much eliminated eight women at the Royal Rumble. Only to lose to Becky Lynch. And my thing is, you know, a podcaster that I respect very well, he said it very, he said it very clear and made a point. They're not going to give Baszler the title because she's not blonde. She does not look like a, one of these divas. And they're waiting for Ronda Rousey, the golden goose. Because... I mean, you look at Baszler, she's not the type of girl that you say, oh, she's hot. She's not hot. She's not saying that she's not She's not ugly either, but this is not the type of woman that WWE would push because they make men only ones, blondes and bimbos with big breasts and looking like Barbie dolls with all these damn um, plastic surgery on them. It's horrible. It's really horrible. It's just ridiculous. So, um... I mean, to me, this 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 was a bad call. Um, again, I don't care what anybody says. They think that I'm bashing WWE. You know the wrong person won. He knows this. And them doing this, this that, this messed up WrestleMania bad. And this is why I, I, I'm going to tell you what I gave it. So, so, to me, it was a real bullshit in my opinion. To be honest, they should have never, never let Becky Lynch win this belt. This woman has this belt for over a year already. So you mean to tell me this is the best you got in the women's division, Becky Lynch? Come on, man. Then the next match was Daniel Bryan versus Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental title. Uh, a lot of delays in this match. Uh, Sami Zayn can't go in, come back out. Uh, you had, he had Cesaro and Nakamura outside. Uh, Daniel Bryan had Drew Gulak. So there was a lot of delays. So it just got like almost five minutes before they even locked up. Drew Gulak take out, uh, takes out uh, Cesaro Nakamura when they kept interfering between um, um, in the match like you know kept stopping Daniel Bryan from going after Sami Zayn and then Bryan Sucker saying 
where it looked like he was going to not chase him because they went in the ring at the, you know, at the Gulag took out his Aro and Nakamura. And they started to walk to the back like he was he was going to take a, a count out. And Daniel Bryan went and grabbed him and started beating on his butt. And and because he wanted to get, so he wanted to get it counted out. So Daniel took control of the match. Daniel, a two-pitch suicide on Zayn. Lucky there was a padding. And cause, you know, usually there's a railing. But when Daniel Bryan went for the two-pitch suicide on, on Zami Zayn, he kind of landed wrong. He went shoulder first. Once he hit Zami Zayn, lucky that's padding. That's not railing. He would have had a shoulder injury. There was no, he would have, he would have been in trouble. So Daniels, uh, he slapped the bricks out of Sammy Zane. Like, not once, not twice, three times. Not, I mean, you heard it. And Sammy then hit the elbow and a clothesline on Daniel to get to control. But then Daniel came back and he started stomping, hitting him with the, with the yes kicks and, and stomping the crap out of Sammy. Cesaro and Nakamura ended up coming back and they attacked Gulak and Daniel took them. Uh, took them after that with a kind of a look like a suicida type and took out both of them but then Sammy caught Daniel with his finishing move it was like we came up the top rope it looked like that's I don't know the name of it but it was like a high kick and he ended up uh, pinning Daniel Bryan for the title now my question was I knew Sammy Zane was not going to lose that belt Sammy Zane uh, is one of the guys that I think he deserves to stay with the title I just don't like the fact that they got him with Zara and Nakamura, Nakamura, it just, they are just, he is a shell of himself from the guy that I used to watch in New Japan Pro Wrestling. WWE is not doing nothing. Either. Nakamura does not care because he's not planning to go back to Japan. He signed another contract. He lives in the Orlando area. He's not moving. Uh, it is very sad to see this man, a legend from New Japan Pro Wrestling, looking like this, being a, a lackey for Zami Zayn. I, I don't understand it. I really don't. So, then the next match was the three-way, uh, the three-way between John Morrison, Kofi Kingston, and Jimmy Uso for the WWE SmackDown Tag Team Championship and ladder match. All three men showed the high flying, doing monkey flips. Uh, Jimmy Uso got hurt at one point when he went up the damn ladder to retrieve the world, the tag team titles. He when he fell down from the from the ladder, he hit his knee. It looked like he hurt himself. Morrison taking control of the match on both on both of the wrestlers. Both Jimmy and Kofi on the top of the ladder. They kept battling from the top. Morrison going up to try to get the title himself. So it was like a three-way. They kept going up, going down. So this match was like a back and forth type of thing. Kofi gets thrown over the ropes when he tries to dive between the ladders. He, there was a ladder in between in the ring. He tried to dive in between the ladders and catch um Morrison and Jimmy Uso but what happened was they called him and it threw his threw his monkey ass out. So uh Morrison then gets rammed on the ladder, ladder placed between the ropes. Uso gets hit with part they call it part four by Morrison, which is I don't know what what the hell JBL was talking about. Uh there's two comments I want to make about this. Part four, what the hell is part four? That was a twisted swanton on Jimmy Uso while the there was a ladder between the ropes from the corner. And he landed that. He, JBL mentions something about, he reminds him of per, Mr. Perfect. Mr. Perfect never, Mr. Perfect Kerr he never, ever did no high flying moves. What the hell JBL was talking about? Kerr he never did any of these moves. So, Mr. Perfect was a, a scientific wrestler. He did not do none of those high flying moves, none of that. So, I don't know what JBL was talking about. So, anyway, so, uh, where was I at? So they get um so he hits uh the, the Swanton Coffee jumps from the top into Morrison who was on the ladder for Horikarana. It was sick. Uzo and Kingston exchange shots again. Coffee goes over the rope on Morrison. Coffee launches the ladder on Uso. I mean he blasted him with it. This is when he was outside. Jimmy placed a ladder on on the placed Jimmy placed on the ladder by Kofi Kingston. He was laying the coffee to the top. Morrison then went, then one of his great moves, that's what I like about John Morrison because he's great. When he gets on that top rope, he does amazing things. So he went, he tight rope, tight rope, walked the ropes and catches coffee on the other side of the corner who's on top and catches him with the Spanish fly. Then Uso, here's a, uh, a frog splash on Morrison on the other side. It, it was just sick. 
then Morrison and Kofi exchange on the top again, only to Kofi to double stomp on on John uh, John Morrison. Uso draw Kofi into the ladder. Then Morrison uh, tried to do a high flying move onto Uso Kohan with a super kick, uh, and I think he jumped from the. If I'm correct, he jumped from the ladder. He got caught lovely with a super kick. Morrison pushes Uso from the top of the ladder to the outside when he. I don't know what Uso was trying to do. I don't know if he was trying to do a frog splash from the top, all the way from the top of the ladder, but he got caught and Morrison went and pushed him off the ladder. He falls out, out to the outside. All three then later on were on the top of the ladder trying to retrieve the belts. And at one point they, they took the clip off. The belt still attached to this WWE logo type steel thing. And now mind you, that while these guys are fighting, the row of uh, the there was another ladder that looked like pulled from the ropes to the other ladder. They looked like a bridge. So when out of nowhere they were both all three of them were fighting for the belt and Morrison falls down into the ladder that was placed in between the ropes and the other ladder and rips the titles to falls down, ripping the titles off the steel I don't know what the hell you want to call it, but and he ends up winning the match. It was a good match. This match was not bad. Um, this, I think this match kind of helped uh, the bullcrap that happened with the match before, which was Becky Lynch and, um, and uh, uh, Shayna Baszler, but you know, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, but this match kind of saved it. So this was a good match. Then we had the Kevin Owens versus Rollins, Kev, uh, Seth Rollins. This was pretty good. Seth and Owens started exchanging outside in the ring. Owens hit the senton on Rollins. Owens uh, took control. Rollins uh, backdrop Owens on the edge of the ring, and then he hit him with the Falcon Arrow on the edge of the ring. So this is this is very 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 uh, uh, physical match. Said so I must say, so it was pretty good. Two two pursuers see on Owens by. Um, by Seth Rollins, he uh, kept talking to Owens about he's the god, he's the man when the, the light are brightest when he's in WrestleMania. Then Owens catches Rollins with a forearm on his third to a then, then Kevin goes into the ring, he spikes Rollins with a DDT, super kick, and then a cannonball by Owens on Rollins. Uh, sent time from the top by Owens for a two count. Owens hit a close line and a bunch of after a bunch of sequence. Buckle bomb and two super kicks by, by uh, Rollins on Owens, but then Owens catches Rollins with a pop up power bomb. Rollins hits then Owens with the belt to get disqualified. And once I saw that, I was like, "Wow, you know, this this WrestleMania already is not that great, and now this is gonna end by disqualification." But then Owens gets uh, grabs the mic. He calls out Rollins and he said no disqualification. At this point, I'm saying, why the hell they're starting this match all over again? Then Seth takes control with beating on Owens outside. And um, he hits him with a, uh, with a with steel steps. Then he hits Owen with three chair shots. I'm talking about he blasted him on the back. So then Owen hits Rollins um, with the I think with the with the ring belt twice. He lays his lay him on top of the announcing table. He goes to the top of the WrestleMania logo and then leaps off the WrestleMania on Rollins on the announcing table. The announcing table blows up. You could tell, he, I mean, Rollins, he had, his air was taken out of him. He, he was like pretty much coughing and, and he sounded, he was really hurt. Always then throw in Rollins into the ring. He stunners him for the win. So this was a good match. I think this was the best match of the night because of how it ended. At first, I said, oh, my God, this qualification, really, this is, this is ridiculous. I was already, like, ready to flip out because I'm like, come on, this is, this is dumb. But they ended up doing what they was right to do, and that was to continue the match, a no disqualification. Uh, this would have been a pop-up moment if Rollins would have done something like this. And a, not a WrestleMania logo, he would have killed himself, probably. But if he would have done something like that in a high place, uh, you would have got a great pop from the crowd, but unfortunately, that's not to be. But this was a good match. Then I don't understand this. Uh, let me bring. First of all, I forgot to mention that freaking Mojo Orali and uh, Gronkowski were the hosts of this WrestleMania. Two clowns. That I think Mojo Orali is a jobber. He's a bum. Okay. Uh, 
the Gronk is just another clown who I don't know why he's there. You know, they let this is why uh, my boy told me how is it that they don't give creative ideas to these wrestlers to come out what they want, but then yet again you allow a, a clown like Kron come out acting like a like a fifteen year old. It's just ridiculous. But uh, this this should have our truth in it. I don't know why this twenty four seven title continues to dominate WWE TV. This is garbage, garbage. Only to see again our truth get rolled up for the 35, 37th time, or the 70th time, gets pinned by Mojo Raleigh. Raleigh gets the bell again. Unbelievable. And it's just, that was the worst, that was the worst of, waste of a time, to be honest. Then we had, what I am considering right now, the worst, the worst, WrestleMania wrestling match ever in the history of this event. And it was the universal title match between Champion Oldberg versus Braun Strowman. Now, Goldberg, I remember I used to be a big fan of his when he was at WCW. And his days in WCW, I'm still, I want to keep that in my mind. And I want to keep it in my heart. Not this crappy-ass Goldberg that I saw right now. See, in this match, I didn't even have to take notes. I could tell you what happened. Three spears by Goldberg. Braun kept getting up. He hit it with a fourth spear. Braun kept getting up. Four power bomb by Braun Strowman, pins Goldberg, and that's the end of the match. There's nothing to talk about. This was two moves for one move from each wrestler, and that was it. There's nothing to talk about. It was horrible. I, I couldn't. I, I'm like, are you serious? You went from having a good match of Owens and Seth Rollins to our true getting pinned for the 24 7 to more garbage? I don't freaking understand i don't get it i don't get it so i was shaking my head like why oh, did you need it to put this match tonight <sighs> jesus christ horrible match i don't care what anybody tells me horrible match then we had the main event aj style versus undertaker boneyard match now my thoughts on this was uh, WWE again biting off Matt Hardy and anybody could tell me oh they've been doing this for a long time they've just been doing way before Matt Hardy and that's a lie that is a lie okay um, let's be real that whole scenes like that that was Matt Hardy's creative ideas and WWE and Vince McMahon didn't bother to take those ideas from Matt Hardy but not but you're going to go and take some of his ideas to put in this match the boneyard match. We didn't know what the hell was a boneyard match. So AJ comes out uh, in a coffin. There's a hearse comes in, they pop out the coffin, and out of it comes out AJ. Undertaker comes out, but not in his regular gear. Undertaker, the big hat and all. Nope, he came in as the American badass. Undertaker starts beating on AJ right away. He called AJ by his real name, Alan. Starts beating him on the casket Undertaker gets out with the window and but gets out gets cut with the window as he hit the hearse and you can see that he got cut with the window when he hit the hearse he slams AJ on top of the windshield he starts beating on him on top of the hearse AJ throws dirt on the Undertaker and kicks him on the groin uh shortcut punch AJ falls in the hole and yeah I, I figure well that's it he probably's gonna Something's gonna happen. Something's gonna happen. This is too damn short. And of course, just like I knew, uh, Anderson and Gallows come out, and some broods come out as a, this light pops on the back, like in a barn. They fall off, and I, I knew they were not gonna help the Undertaker. I was like, nope, they're gonna beat Undertaker up. So, uh, the broods come out. Um, yeah, Undertaker comes and ends up beating up on all the broods, but then Anderson and Gallows starts beating down Undertaker. Undertaker makes a comeback, uses the shovel to hit um, Anderson and Gallo. AJ hit Undertaker with some kind of porcelain. Uh, uh, you could tell it was a porcelain um, statue or something. And you see that blasting behind. AJ charges the Undertaker. AJ breaks the shovel over Undertaker before telling him, I'm making, I made, I'm doing a favor for the world. And he was going to throw Undertaker in the hole. Uh, so he broke the, the shovel on. Uh, falls into Undertaker falls into the hole. 
So you figure, well, it looks like AJ's going to bury Undertaker, and that's it. Uh, you know, Undertaker is done. His career is over. This is the way he's ending. I said, well, you know what? Why not AJ ends his career? Well, no. As soon as AJ was going to get on the the dirt machine to throw the dirt on Undertaker, AJ, Undertaker pops up from the back. Undertaker then starts throwing his power displays, fire, all that stuff. Undertaker got like, uh, comes back. He take care of both of them. He throws Gallo over from the top of the, uh, uh, from the roofs, from the roof of the house. It was a short throw. But then, Undertaker takes AJ by by uh, by the throw. He th slam throws him down from the top of the house. Then he takes him by the grave hole. He kicks him in the hole, and then he told before he took kicked him in the hole. He told him. You put up a good fight. You're one of the guys who actually put up a good fight. But then he ended up putting him in the hole. He buries him. And this match, you know, this match pretty much reminds me of the Hardy compound. Pretty much. That's what it reminded me of. And Undertaker wins the match. He leaves with the uh, with the musical Pantera. Uh, so this match was, I got mixed feelings about this. Uh it was cool. It looked like a, some movie scene, but I, I don't think they should have done this. They should have just had a regular match in the performance center. But of course, WWE wants to make it um, big and bright and all that stuff. So, um, but pretty much, I see this as a, a you know a thing that they stole from Matt Hardy. I don't care what anybody say. And this ain't Jimmy Riboraz was the one who produced this. And if it did, yep. They stole it from Matt Hardy because Jeremy, Jeremy Borash was in TNA or Impact when Matt Hardy was started doing this. So, I don't care what anybody tells me, but that's that's the way I feel. So, there you go, guys. This is the first WrestleMania Night 1. Overall, I say I would give it a, a three stars out of five. Um, they did mess up with the Braun Strowman Goldberg match. That was horrible. Oof. If I've seen a match that horrible, I think that tops it. And that, that's horrible. I don't know what to say. The Becky Lynch and Shayna Baszler, as you've already said it, they're not going to give this belt to this woman. They're waiting for Ronda Rousey to come back to give it to her. And and maybe had Shayna Baszler a few with Ronda Rousey. Uh, oh, make the full horseman, whatever. It just, it, that that was not, that was a bad call. A real bad call. So, overall, I expected worse than this. But it wasn't that bad. Um, I think they didn't need to put that Elias and Corbin match. You didn't need to put that. And you definitely didn't need to put that tag team from the women's, but it was pretty good. I cannot complain about it. Overall, I give it a three out of five. So then again, guys, this is uh my review on night one. Now night two review, I would do it tomorrow in my audio podcast, the Chokes Night Wrestling Report. I'm trying to get a guess on my boy, good old JM. Uh See if he does, he comes in to my podcast. So we could do this to get uh, review together of both, probably night two, not nah, maybe night one. Night one, it's gonna take too long. Night two, we could do night two, talk about that. Uh, till then, guys, uh, again, if you want to find out information for me, check the top. Uh, you get Facebook, uh, my Instagram, my Twitter page, also my anchor audio link is there. You guys can check out all my audio from all my chokes and resident reports, uh, audios that I've done. Uh, I do it twice a week. One's on Monday, sometime on thir Monday and Thursday. That Thursdays are my AEW review. Uh, so you guys guys check that out. Don't forget to subscribe to that to the to my Apple Podcast. To my, they all you can find that audio podcast any uh, major platforms that you guys listen to podcasts. Until then, guys, I want to thank you again for listening. Thank you to all my subscribers. If you like what you hear on this. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, hit all the likes. You know what I'm saying? You really help the channel and it goes up into the search and I could get more subscribers. Uh, the road to 5,000 views. We could do that. Let's go, guys. I know you guys are out there. Uh, let's do this. Until then, guys, from New York City on a Sunday, you have a great day. And tonight, WrestleMania Night 2. You got the Brock Lesnar versus uh, Drew McIntyre, and then the Edge versus Randy Orton. Those are the only two matches I'm looking forward to. So hopefully they uh, live to the bill. Until then, have a good day.